Aloha. I am your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted that you are joining us again today for this special edition of Out and About. It's a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization I may be. Joining me in the studio today, I am delighted to have Audrey Lee and also Brad Fry of Malama Moana. And we're going to talk about uh, the topic of our show is Beyond the Playground. Let's be a little more explicit. So thank you so much for coming in and being my guest. Thanks for Great having us. Here. So this, if any informed viewer will hopefully be reading the newspapers, Civil Beat, a little advertiser watching the news, and they've heard something about Ala Moana Park. They don't maybe exactly understand what's going on. Can you tell us what is Malama Moana? How did it start? And what's your involvement? Okay, I guess I'll take that one. Um, um, Malama Moana is just a group of uh, community residents that go to the beach park. And we're at Ala Moana usually, but then it's grown into a much larger group from the community that uh, have seen things um, proposed for the park that they don't really um, feel should go into the park. So we've been looking at certain issues, um, certain proposals that we feel are not in the community's best interest and we you know, try to bring it up to the city council and the mayor. Okay, and how long has this, how long has the organization been in existence? Well, it's almost five years now. Is it five years? <laughs> it's about five years, yes. And did your, did your group uh, originate with the the EIS that was put out for changes to the park or sometime around there? Yes, it was with the EISPN, the preliminary notice that came out. And when we heard about that, it was um, actually, I think, towards the end of December that we were, well, we became aware of it. And we started to um, kind of voice our opinions and have discussions and uh, came up with a group of people that wanted to do something about it. Okay, so fast forward to today, you've had five years of sort of engagement, understanding, researching, and a lot of this stuff is kind of hidden and opaque, uh, I think, if, if the ordinary citizen to tr try and figure out how the whole system works. Exactly. But you've, you're, you've had a crash course in sort of citizen um, activism. Uh, I believe so. Um, actually, the group has kind of changed um, uh, composition in the past years but this past uh, year and a half a little bit more than year and a half now um, we've we've gotten a little bit more information about how to work with the city and with the city council and and how we are working together so it's become a lot more organized since the first couple and two and a half years or so okay there's a learning curve in there certainly so Ala Moana Beach Park the city has submitted its FEIS, its final environmental impact statement, and in there, there were a lot of different things, but there were basically four things that you are still taking umbrage to, yes. and uh, so I think that maybe we should look at that, although let's start, our, our, our topic is beyond the playground. Um, let's start with the playground, if we can, oh, sure. um, in the, just in the, in the interest of time here. Uh, so let's bring up slide one so we can see what we're looking at here. So Brad, what are we looking at here? This is a slide that shows the uh, playground with the green areas and the, the red areas are everything that is, that's already covered with buildings, roads, paths, ponds, a variety of things. And the, the people who want to put in the playground have said that there's 100 open areas, uh, acres of open green space. Well, there's not really. In this slide, you can see where the play, you can also see where the playground is being proposed for one acre. And it's actually, that circle is smaller than the playground. And when questioned about the green space recently, uh, somebody in the parks office said that there were 85 acres of green space. We think there's less than 85 acres based on this picture. Okay. And uh, so that, that image is, so there's folks that want to put in a, a uh, it's called a playground, but really I, I, I think um, uh, we've heard it uh, described as something like a Disneyland-esque, which is, uh, you know, with zip lines and splash pads, and this is not your swing sets and monkey oh, bars. That's exactly, different, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, exactly right. It's um, being called an inclusive playground. But it, um, yeah. So, so and, and one thing about this playground is its size that I want to mention in this, at this particular moment. 
But this playground is one acre. Now, a lot of people don't know what an acre is, mm -hmm. but imagine a football field, okay, from the five acre line to the five acre line, full width, covered with concrete. Uh, from, so the, the five yard line to the five oh, yard line. Me, so the five, all, yeah. all the way, almost all the way. Yes, almost all the way. To zero. Entirely covered with, with concrete. That's, oh. what this, that's how big this place is. Okay. And at night, currently in, in Alamoana Park, all that area is covered by grass and trees. They build this playground there at night when it'll be totally empty, but it'll be covered with concrete. We think that's awful. Okay, and uh, I think that uh, you, uh, the folks that want it there, um, I think very good intentions. They're talking about having a world-class, inclusive playground for children of all abilities. Uh, what's, what's wrong with, with, with that? Well, let's uh, see the next slide, and I can, I okay. can get into that. This slide shows a, a picture of the playground and shows its location sitting right on top of picnic areas 8 and 9. Well, there is no uh, review of picnic areas 8 and 9, although the EIS says that it's uh, currently not an active area of the park. But it is. It's, these are active areas, and they are totally inclusive, totally accessible, and putting a playground there will actually take away that current accessibility and inclusivity. We, I think you can really also see the huge amount of space that it's taking there of the circle. It's as big as the, the pond. Oh, uh, right, oh, right oh, yeah, it's enormous. It's just, just huge. And, uh, and who will use this, this football-sized uh, playground? It's sized for 500 Aki. But how many will actually use it? It's going to be really convenient for the, con the kids who live in condos across the street. But for the vast majority of, of uh, Oahu, Ohana, they're going to have to take a round-trip drive of one to three hours to get to this playground. Mm -hmm. I think it, w one thing that, that the folks that say they're building, they want to build it there is this is a public-private partnership. It's not going to cost the city any money. Uh, it's going to be actually, the way that I read it, it's actually under the control of the folks that would be building it such that they have the keys, uh, would be in charge of the city would be on the hook for paying for maintenance, but they would decide who's maintaining it or something like that. It's a yes. little bit unclear to me. Is that about right? Yes. That's what we understand. You make up a good point. This thing is going to be fenced, which is right now Alamoana Park is almost completely open. It's wonderful that way. Yep. So, and I think the, the thing is saying, oh, well, this is the perfect place because it's an active zone. Yes, the park would also be good for a skating rink and maybe um, a, a baseball field and a football field and a, a, a soccer field and maybe a, a, a skateboard park. It would be great for all of those things, but the city council in its infinite wisdom over 20 years ago passed a, a, a council policy resolution 98188, which I think was pretty prescient because they realized it does, it's not about the specifics. In this case, it's, it's a dog park and a in a playground, but, but what is the problem with adding onto this park? Well, it's taking up all that open green space. I mean, you know, once it's gone, we can't, we can't um, peel off that concrete pad. Uh, we'll, we'll, we might be able to, but we probably won't. And so that space will be forever taken by that facility. A new structure and new facilities, they need to be, um, you know, Gone, they need to have gone through a rigorous EIS process, whereas this one hasn't, and it's been just kind of placed in there. Okay, and well, speaking of that, so you don't think they're going to build it and then five years later change their mind and dig up the concrete and put back the trees, and how many trees are looking at being taken out of this one? Oh, I, I, I can't it's, say that. It's hard that. to say because the thing has never really been defined. Exactly where it's going to be has never been defined. Exactly what's going to be in, and it has never been defined. The only information that was ever in the AIS was one paragraph and a sketch from the newspaper that says we want to pave over a football field sized area with concrete. That's our playground. So how is it that in our modern day where we supposedly have a collaborative government system and decision making that this very important thing costing millions of dollars with uh, yes. obviously the city is having maintenance issues. They've been spending a lot of money in the park and done a great job greening uh, the, the, the dead areas of grass, fixing the bathrooms, spent a, tens of millions of dollars thus far. But they don't really have the greatest track record in maintenance for something like this, especially for something that's never ever been maintained before. And how is it that we don't know anything about this? Has the process been just, here's, here, this is what you're going to have and, uh, and enjoy it? 
Well, I, I believe I can speak to the process part. Um, you know, recently we've been getting a lot of people asking, you know, what can they do and things like that. Because they know the process isn't working for the betterment of the community. So in acknowledgement of that, the Think Tank um, show sponsored by uh, Grassroots Institute um, that was hosted recently by Kili Akina. And he had, uh, I think it was Steve Petronek and Acamp Napier on it. Um, they were saying that, you know, business have, businesses have been holding these perfunctory hearings with communities, um, but only hearing what they want and, you know, disregarding or minimizing opposition. So this is a big reason for the apathy and uh, for voting and also community unrest. So people feel that, you know, government doesn't really care about them. Um, but then the government likes that because they can, you know, they feel they can do what they want to with minimal or no opposition. Um, so with all the protests going around the state now, um, it's kind of been being blamed upon the protesters, but um, actually it has come about because the government um, and businesses haven't really cared enough to really hear and concretely address the concerns of the community. So, um, you know, we, I think we need to be more explicit. And it's part of our title, the title of our show, this show. Um, you know, let's be a little bit more explicit with our words and actions. Um, if, you know, if I say, or, or let's say if you say, okay. <laughs> um, well, the, Playground was in the EIS, and I say, uh, and I accept that, and I say, oh, well, that's good. Um, so what's the problem? You know, and then you would say, well, I don't think there is a problem, and that would be the end of that discussion. However, on the other hand, if I knew a little bit about what was going on, and I rejected being part of that, uh, I wouldn't say untruth or lie, but the, I could say, you know, I know it was added, but it wasn't evaluated, evaluated, right? And then that's a difference because being a part of the EIS that got studied and evaluated is different from just being stuck in there with a newspaper article. Um, but the only information that the EIS company had that was hired by the city um, was just that one article. One article. So did you have any opportunity to... Uh to really engage with the city or the, the parks department on this uh, plan? No, it was just, um, I think, the only time that the mayor um, actually brought forth, uh, on his third public meeting, he had five presenters, including himself, and he did not allow for any public discussion. So he kind of put uh, people into, different groups, like people concerned with the parking went up front, and people who were concerned with anything else would go in the back and, and just talk to whoever was there manning the easels. And um, so there wasn't um, you know, really time at that point for public input. By November of that year, the group Pani Kako had presented to the Almoana Kakako Neighborhood Board their, you know, their plan for this wonderful playground. And, and then the Alamoana board thought, oh, this is nice, and then kind of voted it okay. That's how it got approved. Sort of shuffled along, but I don't think they had a very extensive presentation either. But recently, they, they had a reverse on that. And what happened with the Alamoana Kaka Ako neighborhood board? Was it this last month? Yeah, so this past month in October, um, we came up with a resolution draft, which we presented to the, that board, board as well as other boards around this area. And they, um, you know, they took a look at it, did some edits to it, and then decided to vote on it at the time because there were so many people from the community there to hear about it. And what was the gist of that resolution? Well, basically that the issues that we're bringing up today, going through the slides, the playground, the dog park, perpendicular parking and the sand replenishment, those things, um, you know, need to be re-looked at and um, re-evaluated because of certain, you know, So they're saying, mm, maybe concerns. let's hold off on this here. Let's take another look at it. Let's have some more public input. 
Yes. Okay. Um, it, just for those folks who I, I mentioned, Council Policy Resolution 98188, that was a resolution that said no new permanent structures should be built in this park. Exactly. Because they saw little pieces of it being nibbled away, and at the end of the day, you have a little tiny green space. But right. a fundamental characteristic of this park is its open space. Exactly. And so that is what we're trying to preserve here. It's not being against something, it's being for keeping the open green space. That's correct. Absolutely. And fundamentally at the at the end of the line that once you concretize that, it's done. And and please please understand this, we're very much in favor of, of inclusive playgrounds. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things about this is if we go to say slide four. Maybe when we come back from a break. But, okay. but, yeah, because that's an important point is that we're not against inclusive playgrounds. We're Absolutely. back before them and we want them all over the islands. And we and, want them in the best places. And the best locations. So we're going to talk about that when we get back. But uh, as you see, time flies when you're have, uh, having fun and educating folks. Uh, I am very pleased to have joining me in the studio Audrey Lee and Brad Fry of Malama Moana. We'll be back in a minute for more of this. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura, Thanks so much to you all. We're back. We're live. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. And we're talking today with Audrey Lee and Brad Fry of Malama Moana. And we are talking about the park and being explicit with uh, the things that are maybe beyond just the playground. So right before we went to break, Brad, you were talking about uh, you wanted to go to our next slide. So let's just yes. jump right back into it. Which um, this, is this, a this shows the uh, Kakaoko Parks area, which was recently transferred. Matter of fact, just on November 1st, the uh, state park land at Kakaoko was transferred to the city with $2.25 million for repair and maintenance. Resolution 19-263, uh, which is before the City Council this Wednesday, introduced by uh, Council Member Kobayashi, talks about putting this uh, playground that we've been talking about over in this Kakaako Parks area, which would be really a great location for it because it's right next door to the Children's Discovery Center, a totally ADA compliant facility, perfect for kids, a, a perfect location to put this all, all together. Now, there have been some problems mentioned about this area, a lot of them simply because it was a state area, not a city area. And all of the problems that have been mentioned can be resolved if the mayor wants to. Okay, so the, the, I think some of those things were just like, oh, it's not activated, but if you put something there that would activate it, then it's activated. Exactly. Uh, you know, putting in um, proper uh, restrooms that are, that are ADA compliant with, you know, some adult size changing room, done. Right. Uh, there's going to be... I think a couple dozen city staff hired to take care of this park as well. Yes. So there's going to be a lot of people roving around on their on, and the, the, the buggies and taking care of things. So making sure that things are safe. And you could even put a, a mini police substation there if you wanted to as well. And does matter. That's a good point about the police because one of the reasons that area is a lot has a lot of crime problems is because the only police there since the state land have been uh, state highway patrol, I think, right. or sheriffs rather. And now with the city involved, the city police will be able to patrol that area. It'll make a huge difference. And it's just it's been a mishmash of jurisdictions, and, and, and the state hasn't wanted to put any money in there. It, ha it, it can't handle this. So giving it over to the city, it's a huge space. It's probably, what, about 80 acres or something like that? Um, mm, not sure. It's, a, it's big enough. So you could also put the dog park over there. 
Which, which would be great. Brings more citizens into the area. Okay, let's let's talk about the dog park right now because that's up, and we might come back to the the children's playground later. But let's let's make sure we cover these other things first. So on our next slide, we've got the dog park, and what are we looking at here? Well, the dog park was one of three additions that the um, to the second draft environmental impact statement, along with the playground and sand replenishment proposals. And Ala Moana Beach Park currently has signs that clearly say no animals, no dogs at the park. However, in an obscure law um, that we found after researching, it says that it is okay to traverse the park with a leash on the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, that means not staying at the, the park to play unleashed or swim in the water, you know. Um, but <sighs> we also see that. Um, some dog owners will pick up after their dogs, their, their feces, but others don't. And uh, we have found, I mean, maybe not me personally, but a lot of people have found and have taken pictures of feces in the sand and in other areas, um, even the sidewalk areas. So we've heard from nearby condos that some of their residents actually just leave the, the feces in the dog walk or dog run, I think just saying that, well, you know, we pay so much for maintenance, you know. You our taxes should change. cover that. Yeah. Well, so. That's part of our yeah. nation uh, <laughs> becoming a nation of sociopaths, but that's a different matter. Mm -hmm. But as far as this goes, there's some specific things why this may not be the most suitable area there uh, yes. in the park. Number one, it's a fenced off structure, so it violates mm -hmm. the council policy resolution. Again, back to the fundamental thing that says, right. Dog park, children's playground, soccer field, uh, baseball build. field, ice rink, whatever. Mm -hmm. Can't be built. S because of this, um, it's also too small, isn't it, for a it's, recommended dog park size? Yeah, so with the criteria um, that was put together by a task force of the Alamoana neighborhood, uh, Alamoana Kako neighborhood board, and um, Council Member Carol Fukunaga had asked them to do this. Um, I believe it was uh, Chairperson Ryan Tam and Ryan Bagnell that put together this, this task, um, task force and a report that listed criteria and apparently a list of locations. And Alamoana did not fit the criteria. It did not get on the list of locations. Beyond being in, uh, in a yep. violation of council uh, exactly. policy resolution 98188. Exactly. So yes. beyond that, it was space, close too close to the beach, not enough parking. Yeah, we got yeah, I mean, again, that people, was people, cars, canals, pedestrians, all, all of those it. things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so a great location would be uh, maybe Kaka'ako again, Kaka'ako Park. It, I think that one was on the list. So definitely <laughs> on the list. And another way to activate that space, you got hills, dogs love to run up hills. We need some more trees there. It's a, it is a great space, and it does need activity, but there's plenty of parking for a kid's park or for this other one. But what, I think you mentioned 500 keikis at the, in the, the playground area. Where's the EIS on that? How are you going to add 500, or even if they came, if four kids to a car, that's another 100 cars. That's, this park is, Alamona is full already. It's just saying. It brings us to another issue, which is going to be parking. Um, and Brad, so you can show that next slide. What is this? Well, this shows on the left. It shows the EIS uh, drawing of the parking, which is totally unrealistic. It shows pickup trucks that are shorter than real pickup trucks. It shows a narrow travel lane. They're actually talking about narrowing the roadway there from uh, 22 feet, I think, to 20 feet. Okay. You know, in fire trucks already drive down that road and would need to drive down the road in the, in the future, emergency vehicles, it would be insanely difficult and dangerous. On the right, it shows what it would really be like. And what it amounts to is that, uh, is that aside from everything else, the EIS uh, plans for 103 additional parking spaces in the keyhole area. And the total number of additional stalls they planned for their park was 113. So they're there basically with the keyhole parking. Then for some reason, they decided to widen the street and put in this perpendicular parking, which adds another 181 additional stalls. So we're way over what's recommended. So beyond that it needs here from the diagram, looks like we'd need to take out about another... Uh, 12 feet. 
12 feet, and that 12 feet from the road is filled with trees. Actually, I counted them this morning. It's about 30 trees. 30 trees. So getting rid of some big trees. And those. the, the other grass. thing is it's, uh, it's dangerous to back out. It's very dangerous. With per perpendicular, perpendicular parking, parking, right? Because yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. against two rows of traffic. Yeah. You're either going this way or this way. But either way, um, you have to in and out. or you back in and out, um, that's another way to do it. But still, uh, you're, it depends on who's driving and how they're parking. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's, a ha it's a safety hazard, and the number of, of stalls you said are already almost exactly the same as called for in the EIS that they're going to put in the keyhole parking, exactly. which is just to the uh, ever side of um, Banyan, yeah, uh, the Banyan, so. uh, uh, the McCoy Pavilion. McCoy Pavilion, yeah, thank you. And you know, the, the carrying capacity of the park has to be considered. You just can't add on an ongoing basis more and more of parking spaces. And so they really haven't studied it. Also, they're talking about king tides coming up to the sidewalks now, and they forecast that there will be even more sea level rise. They're talking about poor planning and a lot of, but a lot of budget resources to add extra parking. And what's re really needed? We don't want the current administration to hold the city budget hostage with unnecessary expenses. Mm -hmm. And I saw uh, we had a couple things. I just wanted to show them up. You guys. If you want to know anything about anything, don't just rely on the news. Do some research yourself. Here's something, an article from Ian Lind that came out today or yesterday, which is ilind.com, ianlind.com. He says, follow the money behind the controversial all of Moana playground. Uh, we've got a column here in Civil Beach. All of Moana, not the best place for a world-class playground. All of Moana opponents. We're being steamrolled. Maybe you guys are, are talked about in here. And another one, All of Moana playground backers are not just a group of mothers. There's other articles in here, and we don't mean or wish to disparage any of the good intentions of the folks that want to put in an inclusive playground. And I think that's really important to mention. Uh, same for dog owners. I love dogs. I can understand, oh, we need a dog park here. But when I understand the intent now of the council policy resolution, this does not belong there. And I've become a, a, a convert to that, even though I, I've got my dogs that I love. Um, we have one more slide, which was about the sand that replenishment. Is and that is a, that's a, a whole big topic in and of itself. So I don't know that we'll have time to, to look at that. But let's just say that it has a lot of environmental issues and also just the way that it's done. And we can come back for another show and talk about it. Okay. But I wanted to give you a chance just to say final words about yeah. whatever you want to talk well, about. I'd like to just maybe conclude with this last paragraph. Okay. Um, so, you know, we at Malama Moana, together with other community um, and nonprofit groups, do not want to see the open green space taken away from Ala Moana. For new structures and facilities that can be placed in more appropriate uh, locations. And to find out what more appropriate means, this must come from an actual vetted source or criteria such as a task force and not just preferred intentions. So we'd like to work together with the community to do that. And Brad, any last words you want to say? Absolutely. The thing is, we need to work together to have good objective criteria, figure out what's best for, for Ahu Ohana, and then make it happen. Okay. And for those that want to learn more about this, Wednesday, City Council, I think it's 9 a.m., Council uh, okay. Resolution at, at 10 o'clock, at Resolution 19-263. If you can go down and testify in public, Go down to testify in public. If you want to give your comments about it, do it online today. I think they need to be doing their 24 hours in advance, or do both. As usual, I am always inspired by my guest uh, that I've had today uh, and, and that I have every week, but uh, I have been especially pleased to have Audrey Lum and also Lee. Brad Fry. Of, uh, Lee. I'm sorry, Audrey Lee. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> no, <that's okay. laughs> Audrey, sorry. Uh, Audrey Lee and Brad Fry of Malama Moana. Uh, you, you have a website? Yes, malamamoana.org. Malamamoana.org. Okay, so you'll find out a lot more information on there. Educate yourselves. Uh, come on out. Enjoy the park. This is your world, what you do with it. So get involved. I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we welcome your uh, feedback and comments. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Robert McLean, our floor manager, Eric Kalander, and Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. I'll see you here every other Monday at 3 p.m. for more of Out and About on Think Tech. Aloha, everyone. Thank you.